Hi, everybody. It's Dennis Daly welcoming you to All Week Theater. Every week I take a classic old-time radio episode, cut it up into five pieces, and present it for your convenient listening pleasure. Now, part three of The Cavalcade of America. Discussion after discussion caused further postponement of any definite action. On July 1st, 1776, the Committee of the Whole met and advised the passage of the Lee Resolution. The vote was nine colonies for and four against. We find Franklin, Jefferson, and Adams the night of July 1st discussing the situation. Nine votes out of 13. No, it's not enough. If the resolution isn't passed unanimously tomorrow, the rest of the world will never believe our colonies are united. Never believe we are the United States of America. Four colonies against. Delaware, South Carolina, Pennsylvania, and New York. The Delaware delegation is evenly divided. The New York delegation has no instructions, and none could possibly arrive by tomorrow. The South Carolina delegates feel that their instructions aren't broad enough to allow them to vote affirmatively. Rutledge has called them together tonight. Uh, perhaps his eloquence may persuade them. I'm worried about Delaware. The vote will always remain one to one. McKean for and read against. And we can't count on Delaware. McKean told me that he'd sent a post rider for Caesar Rodney. As the third member of the delegation, he's sure to favor the resolution. Rodney's 80 miles away, and they say he's a sick man. We can't expect him to arrive in time to vote. It's your own Pennsylvania delegation that worries me most, Dr. Franklin. That's a negative majority that no amount of eloquence or persuasion can change. I know, I know. Dickinson and Morris are sincere. So are Willing and Humphreys. Four to three against. Hmm. Come in. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, good evening, good evening Dickinson. Mr. Dickinson. I trust I'm not interrupting. Why, not at all. Come in, Dickinson. We were just discussing you. <laughs> not too harshly, I trust. Gentlemen, I was much impressed with the vote today. Uh, so much so that you wish to change yours, I hope. No, Doctor. I still believe in reconciliation. But I love my country too well to hold out against wishes of majority. I know that independence must pass... And I realize the necessity for an undivided front. My conscience won't permit my voting for the resolution, but I can stay away from the Congress. That would make a tie in the Pennsylvania delegation, Mr. Dickinson. I'm on my way to talk to Morris. If he also remained away tomorrow, you would have a majority in the Pennsylvania delegation. Uh, Mr. Dickinson, you and I have long been opponents. Now I want to express my appreciation and gratitude, sir. Of course, I can't promise for Morris. Tomorrow will tell the tale. We must wait for tomorrow. On the morning of July 2nd, the delegates of the Continental Congress assembled to vote on the Lee Resolution. Franklin and Adams are seated together not far from the chairman, John Hancock, as the voting proceeds. There's eight. New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina. Four more to come, with New York not voting. The chair calls on Mr. Gwinnett of the Georgia delegation. Georgia votes in favor of the revolution. The South Carolina delegation, Mr. Rutledge. Mr. Chairman, last night we held a meeting of the South Carolina delegates lasted well into the morning. We have come to the conclusion that our instructions are broad enough to allow us to vote on the question. South Carolina votes in the affirmative. Rutledge must have been very eloquent. Well, I'm beginning to breathe easier. There are still two more, and... Uh... At the request of Colonel McKean of Delaware, I have postponed calling on that colony until an attempt has been made to secure a full representation.
So join me next time when I take a classic old-time radio episode and split it up into five easy-to-digest pieces right here on All Week Theater. Theater.